Go Jackers. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to Rec Talk. Just got back in town. There's a few things happening on the tech front we need to talk about. And uh, boy, do we need to talk about it. But yeah, I appreciate all you guys watching. Uh, let's get into it. So Georgia Tech has just hired uh, probably their last hire on the defensive side of the ball with Corey Peoples. This is a guy that came from Georgia State. He was their secondaries coordinator. Basically, all every defensive back, corner safeties. Nichols, he coached at Georgia State. And I've said this before. Um, you know, Georgia State really has had a better program than Tech in the Collins era, especially. Though looking at it, they went 4-8, and eight, not last year, but the year before. So they've had some stumbles. And I'll just be honest with you, there are some things that concern me uh, with this hire. Let's look at his background, though. And I'm not going to give you anything you can't read on AJC or Sports Illustrated or whatever. Uh, but you can get it here, too. Uh, people's from Bishopville, uh, South Carolina. He's an all-state quarterback, played defensive back, too. Uh, went to Georgia Military Institute. Uh, won a NJCAA championship while he was there. I'm not sure. what is that JUCO? Um, I don't know what the J stands for. A more prepared YouTuber would be able to tell you that. But if you've been watching Rec Talk for any length of time, you know uh, that's not what you're going to get here. <laughs> so uh, he did play for the Eagles from 05 to 06. And it's not his first coaching stop, but from 2014 to 2018, he was at Charleston Southern. Uh, South Carolina State, he was a D.C. Um, at Albany. He was at Georgia Southern as well. In that time, he coached nine all-conference defensive backs, which sounds good. I do I do like that when I read it. Um, he was at Georgia State uh, from 2021 to 2023, obviously until we hire him this year. And I just have to be honest. I think I've been maybe even – I wouldn't classify it as brutally honest. I'm going to have another video coming out soon over kind of expectations with the 2024 schedule because I do think we kind of need to pump our brakes a little bit on that. Um, as I said in the live show, head in the clouds is fine, but we got to have our feet planted firmly on the ground. And I think you have to look at, you know, what happens on the field and, and be somewhat realistic because his time at Georgia State, is concerning to me. For me, I'm looking at what happened on the field. Now, I'm not going to go look at three years of Georgia State games. I'm just looking at statistically total defense. And because he's a defensive backs guy, how was the passing defense, right? So 2021, Georgia State went eight and five, which is which is nice for Georgia State, obviously. They've, they've had some good runs. 76 total defense. 105th passing defense, though. So I saw that. That was concerning. 2022, 106 total defense. They went 4-8 and eight that year. 62nd ranked pass defense, which is pretty good for Georgia State. I mean, their strength of schedule or whatever is not going to be that great. But 62nd, middle of the road, is pretty good for a group of five school, in my opinion. The killer for me, though, is last year, 116th ranked overall defense, 128th ranked pass defense. And I feel like play on the field just cuts through a lot of it. If you read a lot of these articles, none of them are at all critical of the hire. And I'm not necessarily being critical of the hire either. But when we bring in a defensive backs coach and the passing defensive passing stats are I mean 128th is what we were in rush defense this year so my question is what what is it about this hire that makes me think we're going to take a step up in the secondary now the secondary was was the best part of our defense last year and and I guess it really comes to I mean look he got some awards like Bill Wash and like coach coach of the year leadership of the year awards look that's all great I'm sure super respected you know around coaching circles and and that's fine but the 
defensive passing stats when you when there's like three teams in the country or five teams in the country worse at pass defense and then we're bringing the guy in that was responsible for the secondary I don't like that uh, and make no mistake and I will make another video about it most likely today we're going to face three teams that will most likely be preseason top 10 teams the same Georgia Tech team, and particularly looking at the defense um, we had last year, will not make a bowl on this 2024 schedule. So we have to make substantial strides forward. Now, obviously, with the linebacker play and defensive line play, we could really help out our secondary. But, man, that 128th ranked pass defense last year is um, ultra concerning. So that's kind of my take. You know, Look, we hired the guy. I'm happy. I respect Georgia State's program. But uh, there's going to be a lot to prove in the secondary this year in lieu of these defensive stats that I'm seeing on, on, on the sheet here. A few other things before uh, we finish out the video. Th something that I'm ultra excited about. And thank God, thank you for having a little bit of common sense with the spring game. Uh, the spring game is going to be April 13th, 1 p.m. on a Saturday, free admission. I've never understood why, like, there was a year we had it on, like, a Thursday night. Um, we had, you know, under Collins, these completely convoluted, made-no-sense rules. Um, I think we had it on a Friday, too. Have it on a Saturday when the most people can come, 1 p.m. Um, and look, the spring game's for the fans. Uh, I'm going to be excited. We're all going to be there. Um, go check that out. The other thing I wanted to mention, uh, Edinoza Rubin, uh, kind of nicknamed E.T., uh, hit the portal. He's found a new destination, which is all, I shouldn't say hilarious. It's just interesting to me. He's going to UMass. And it seems like any time, I don't know that we've had a single transfer for Clemson, uh, that's come to tech that's worked out and him and, and Puma Chan last year went to UMass too. So this seems to be a, um, typical path now for Clemson transfers. They come to tech. I don't know that ET recorded more than like three tackles all year. I'd have to go look. Uh, he did not get any semblance of, of, you know, meaningful playing time from what I remember. Now he's going to UMass. I just thought that was funny. And can, the thing I'm most excited to talk about, I'm not a basketball guy. And by the way, check out Jujician. Um, I'll put a link to his channel uh, in the chat. It's Jujician, J-O-O-G-I-C-I-A-N, Talk Sports. In fact, uh, I'll put it. I'll put it on the screen now. Uh, this is his channel. He does uh, all things tech basketball. I don't know enough about basketball <laughs> to get on here and talk about it in any educated way. But guys, and may, he might be streaming the game tonight. So go check him out. Go subscribe to him. I'll put a link to his channel in the chat. Number three, North Carolina. Comes, it comes into our backyard. A lot of people saying best team in the country. And they just can't beat us no we are so in north carolina's head even on the and we're not a good basketball team this year we're not uh struggled got blown out by georgia um a lot of you know came out on the losing end of a lot of close games now we have beaten like duke and stuff and now north carolina and i don't care about the way the game was called or the refs you are like three letter grades more talented than us. You can't beat us. I, I mean, North Carolina, whenever, I'll put it this way. Whenever something happens throughout my day where I'm like, man, I'm just really down on myself. I don't know what to do. I just think at least I don't root for North Carolina. And it's, a, it's like a jolt of energy. I immediately feel better. Uh, the hell with North Carolina. They're a garbage program. And uh, to end the video, let's just look. Let's kind of recap the defensive staff. So let's look at um, who we've had leaving, 
who we've got coming in. Um, because this is going to be, if, if this doesn't work out, we won't make a bowl next year. Like I, I'm confident in saying that defense has to be um, substantially better. Weird thing I had to type out here, out two DCs. We've basically ousted two DCs here. Um, Andrew Thacker, you know, the year before last in Key's inaugural year, the, the defense was a cornerstone of the team. We had some studs on that team at linebacker. Keon White um, and the linebackers we, we had, they, they're, their uh, names are escaping me at the moment. Um, we really had no reason to think the defense was going to be what it was this year. After the Bowling Green loss, um, it was that was a wrap for Thacker. I've never seen another man address another man the way Key did on the sideline of that game. Thacker was out um, probably at halftime. Um, Cher comes in. He's now now he's not totally out. He's moved to an off the field role, um, but he took over the DC. He was also our linebackers coach. Um, so he's out. I don't know if it's been officially announced yet, um, but Coleman's definitely gone. Kind of hate to see that. I think he was more of a guy brought on for recruiting. I don't know how great his defensive line coaching was because I don't know how much of that was dictated by the DC, but the defensive line play was awful. Obviously, the linebacker play was probably as bad as I've ever seen in the history of me watching Georgia Tech football. And look, I do feel bad for these guys, but when the product, when the results are as bad as what they were on the defense, there's going to be massive turnover. And we've really turned over our entire defensive staff now. Um, also, Tillman is gone. Hate to see it. You know, Coleman and Tillman, both tech guys. And as much as I like to have tech guys in, look, our head coach is a tech guy. Just cards on the table. I could really care less whether you went to Georgia Tech, you're a tech guy or not you know, as far as being a tech coach, you know, I'm sure Alabama doesn't care that Nick Saban is from West Virginia, you know, and I think went to Kent state. I guarantee you they could care less about that. All I care about for tech for Georgia tech is winning. That's it. That's all I care about. Uh, so whether you're a California guy or you're from Europe, if you can coach football, I want you on our staff. If you can coach football and you, you can recruit uh, that that's what I care about. Now, who do we have coming in? I know his name's not Stan Tucci, but until I can verify that the defense is what it needs to be, I will call him Stan Tucci. Um, we bring in Stan Tucci from Duke. Um, I've dedicated a whole video to that. Really, this whole, this whole what we do next year is going to hinge on him and what he does with the defense. We'll talk about kind of scheme and stuff uh, before we end the video. The most exciting hire we've made, Jess Simpson. I think that's an absolute home run hire. Ton of experience. Coached at Buford. Went back to back to back three different times while he was a coach at Buford. Twice while he was a head coach at Buford. Coached in the NFL. Coached at Miami. Coached at Duke. Um, honestly, I wouldn't have even been um, heartbroken had we hired him as the DC, but I think Simpson's a fantastic hire. We also bring in, um, Pope. He, um, will be the, the edge rusher, um, coach and the line, linebacker coach. Uh, Santucci is also, is a linebacker specialist. That's a hundred percent why we hired him. And I I'm fine with that hire too. I guess they'll be kind of playing double duty with the linebackers that also insinuates, um, really a four, two, five scheme as well where you have kind of these hybrid edge rusher, linebacker type players um, that would fit in a 4-2-5 scheme. So I'm almost certain that's what we'll run, probably not exclusively, but I I'm sure that's what we'll run a lot. And I've talked about, look, defensives, defenses have had to evolve with the speed at which offenses run, which means you need more speed on the field, which means you, meet, you need faster people on the field, right? More defensive backs, more hybrid type players, not as much beef out there. So I'm fine with that too. Obviously we just talked about peoples. I've spoken my piece. I hope that schematically and everything he fits in and I can, at the end of the 2024 season, I can just disregard the 128th ranked pass defense that he just came out of. 
But I've got to say it again. It is concerning to me. It is concerning to me. I would kind of like, I mean, I, I would almost like to see a press conference is like, okay, what was it about this guy um, that that made us hire him? You know, what what was the thing that really got us excited about bringing him on staff? With that being said, let me know what you guys think. Be watching out for that other video. Tell me in the comments what you think of this hire. What do you think about the defense? Do you think it's going to be you know much better next year? It was about as bad as it could possibly be this year. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video.